Hi, I'm Bill. I'm here with Jesse. Hello. We are the Minimalist Garden, and we're at the Minimalist Garden property here, and we are looking at uh, it's it's a week before Thanksgiving, so it's middle of November. Uh, the plants are pretty much uh, gone dormant for the year. This bed here is all wildflowers, and if you remember last spring, we had quite a few wildflowers growing up in there. It looks really nice. And we're planting more this year, and hopefully, you know, each year we'll get more and more. We have our rain barrel here, Jess. It's full of water. We had a, not quite full, but we had a uh, storm. We had some rain, so when it dries out a little bit, we'll just pull this out of here and drain the water over into the plant bed there. Because you don't really, really want to have water going into the rain barrel in the winter in case it, you get a hard freeze, as it could damage the barrel. Yeah, well, I'm periodically I'm cleaning these leaves and stuff off the barrel, but uh, overall, this is a simple little rain barrel, only costs a hundred bucks. Of course, this is our favorite plant. It houses lots of, uh, a lots of birds uh, enjoy this. Very sharp thorn, it will defend itself if you get too close to it. These, uh, these little berries, though, the birds, the, the birds and the uh, squirrels like those, and they eat them regularly. This tree was flush with them earlier in the season, and most of them have been uh, eaten since then. So this is the, uh, the mint garden. Still has some mint, although this time of year the mint kind of loses its flavor. But uh, but still, it's still quite good. It's a little lavender with a really nice smell to it. Really nice. And um, and this is some basil. Really. So, but that's still green, and we can harvest that on going on into uh, into the season. The azaleas were blooming just until uh, recently, until we got some, until the cold weather came in, kind of put a damper on that. Although the plants themselves still look pretty good, even though it's late in the season. There's some nice ferns going back up in there, and some wild strawberries, but there again, those are all gone now. This was a volunteer golden rod that came in. I think it showed some, uh, uh, showed this when it was flowering. So this time of year, it's just uh, going dormant. We'll probably trim it back here um, sometime next couple of days. We took our leaves and ground them up and put them in this plant bed here. You can see our 2 d tree here is, looks pretty nice. But uh, three CPO, we haven't cut him back. So he was coming back this year. Remember, this is our permeable surface here. We did a proposal that, with the uh, community to do this in the driveway. They, they denied us, um, and, uh, and we're seeing what we can do about getting that corrected. We left the leaves on here for a reason. Um, number one, we, we took most of the leaves we took off, and we ground them up and used them for mulch around the other plant beds. But we left a number of leaves on here because we want that uh, nutrients to go back into the soil over the course of the winter. This, uh, and, and over in there around the tree, we left those leaves there. We'll leave those over throughout the winter because, uh, because a lot of pollinators, particularly butterflies and moths, will lay their cocoons up underneath those uh, leaves for the winter time. So we'll leave those there until spring and then we'll remove them when it starts to get wet in the springtime. Over in here we've got another wild plant, wildflower plant bed that uh, we just started this year. You can see these plants are, are, are pretty healthy and uh, have flowered all year round. Uh, there's not as many as we'd like, but uh, there again, we're going to put, we'll put more, uh, we let it reseed itself, and then we'll put some additional seeds in. You can see these plants are pretty healthy, even though it's been cold. And, uh, and, and the good thing about it is the deer don't like them, and will not eat them. So that's been a real a bonus for us this year. 
truck here. It's got a really nice, nice. A couple of years ago, the year before I left, they got kind of diseased or something, and we had to cut them back. We cut them back like down to here, and then they just came back really nice. So these are evergreens. They stay green all year round. And, uh, they just grown up nice. This over here is the, uh, is the, uh, the part of the dry creek meadow where we let the grass grow. And uh, it's done really nice. I can see it's habitat. You can see the flat here. The deers come in here and lay down in here uh, because it's comfortable and they like it. The dry creek meadow is, uh, is doing well. So a nice variety of plants here, but like there again, they've all gone dormant. These are um, uh, some kind of Burberry, I think, or uh, some, but these, these are coming in nice, although we're a little disappointed. We thought they would come in faster and lusher. These are about two years old, but, and even though a lot of these plants in here have uh, have held on and are and are healthy, but they haven't been growing much. So we're not really sure what the cause of that is. You know, part of our philosophy here in the minimalist garden is to allow these plants to uh, define what the space, how the space is to be, rather than try to mold the space into what we think it ought to be. The grasses over here are coming pretty nice um, over the course of the year. Here again, we have these, we have a number of these plants here we put in, they're all native. And right there, and like over in here. But we've been disappointed that they haven't really flourished much. They just seem to be holding on. And over the course of the season, they're, they're healthy, but they don't seem to be growing much. The Dry Creek Meadow itself is a nice space and is doing what it is we intended it to do, which is to nurture wildlife and allow some plants to come in. We did put wildflowers over in here, and they came in really nice last uh, spring, early summer, back over in this area here, with quite a few uh, wildflowers. They were really colorful and, and diverse and pretty. All along here, you can see how we're using the, the, uh, the wood and, the, and just the litter from the woodlands to, uh, to differentiate the plant bed here. These plants came in really nice in the, you know, throughout the summer, but now they're all gone dormant. This is our uh, minimalist technique, you seem to use this a number of times. To stimulate the plants, to keep them clean. This is our uh, fig tree, and um, that uh, didn't produce any figs this year, but we are going to be trimming it. One thing that I found out, we did some research, and, and these branches here that come off of the uh, off of the root system, these are what you need to trim back. So that you can, uh, because they rob the energy from this area here. Now that this is dormant, we'll be over in here and we'll trim this up and uh, try to uh, stimulate it to give ourselves some uh, some figs this year. Plant that here with our hair and moon bed. And here again, we were kind of disappointed in what it did, although you know, the plants are healthy. And, and, they, and they did nicely all year, but they didn't send up the stems this year. Last year they did, this year they didn't. So I'm just thinking that that's something to do with the ecology of this particular plant. And that next year it's going to, uh, it, it's going to really blossom and show us those nice red uh, haramui uh, stems that it shoots up in the, in the late summer, early fall. But uh, but the, but it's held on really nice, and you can see all up in here how it has managed to crowd out the periwinkle, and we really haven't had to do much. This was our uh, our uh, experiment on 
replacing the periwinkle, which is an invasive, with something that is native, which is the Haramuri uh, grasses. You can see here how we use, oh, see how something burrowed down in there? How we use the, the uh, mulched up leaves to, uh, to spread around the trees and allow some food and, and, uh, and habitat and, and warm winter quarters for, uh, for the critters that want to uh, make their home up in here. And then trying to invite them back in. We've had a number of discussions about how the animals are have been abandoned enough, but uh, hopefully we can get them to come back. This is our first bed, the uh, one we've been nurturing for years. And um, actually, you know, the ferns like this time of year where it's cool and wet and they can absorb more sunlight. And actually, they become green, they will go dormant when it gets really cold. They will uh, go down and we'll come around here and we'll trim off some of the uh, pieces, of some of the stems here. And then come back nice. See, this is what happens when you're trying to get dry and they break up like this. So we leave all this stuff here. Where of our flock. You know, it's over the years that all these. The, all this uh, branches and things that we put up here have broken down. If you remember right over in there, we used to have a big pile of stuff that's all just broken down and, and gone back to where it came from and provided new paints back into the ground. So, um, hopefully we'll get, looks like we're getting some, some growth here and some uh, spring and summer. This should uh, blossom into something more substantial. It would be nice if it fill this whole area up with, uh, with this, I don't know, what do you call that? Ginkgo type plant. You can look up, if you didn't see, you can see where the green is. Like I said, we haven't been up doing a lot, but you know, we do, uh, we do keep the leaves off of the moss and allowed it to, and have allowed it to come in and, and grow nicely. This is our woodland in the winter. Last spring we had an issue with the community. They cut down some of these magnificent, couple of these big magnificent trees up there. That was sad. We tried to save them and then we did the tree ceremony. Remember that? Yes. So at least we uh, we thanked them for their service and uh, and bid them uh, 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 goodbye. So um, they, they haven't since been cut down, and um, uh, that makes it sad every time we go up there. But things happen. Um, here we are, Menlos Garden. You can see you now it's uh, one of the one of the things about uh, the gardening is. You have to enjoy it all times of year, and now it's a time when the plants are, are dormant and and, and not uh, displaying in their their they're displaying in a different way um, in their dormant stage. So we understand that. We appreciate that, and, uh, and we will continue to inform you of uh, where we're at with this as, as the year goes by. So. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next time. Adios. See you.